Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I mean, I always say in today's video, this is what we're going to talk about, but you guys have read the title, so you obviously know what we're going to talk about. In just about every single one of my YouTube videos, I try to incorporate my analytics. And you guys have obviously seen that in several of my videos in the past, but one thing that I've noticed is that I do not actually have a complete guide to YouTube analytics on my channel. Sure, I've talked about how to read your YouTube monetization analytics or YouTube revenue analytics. I've shared three things you need to pay attention to, as well as how you can use your analytics to really grow your YouTube channel, but just as a whole, like in general, how do you really read your YouTube analytics? And the other reason why I want to film this YouTube video is because YouTube recently changed their analytic platform. And I'm sure you guys have noticed, especially if you are using the new YouTube Creator Studio, and if you are not, this is the direction that they're going, guys. They're gonna remove the old one, so make sure that you are using the new one. But even within that, they just changed the layout of it. So I had to kind of relearn it, figure out what I'm going to share with you guys, in this video and I now feel like I have a good handle on what's going on. So I'm ready to teach you guys how to read your YouTube analytics. Now, before I really start my screen recording, I just want to say that I am teaching you this with the thought that you are not going to abuse it. And this is something that honestly you may not even realize, but even last night I received a DM from someone asking if I ever thought about giving up and they're really struggling and they're just not sure what to do if they should continue pushing forward. And one thing that I said to them is you need to make sure you're not putting your value, your work, into your numbers and your success. Guys, I wouldn't be where I am today if I took a look at my analytics every single day and I was waiting for views and I was waiting to hit certain numbers. Yes, I do believe in looking at your YouTube analytics and I really do think that it can help to scale your YouTube channel. But when you are just getting started, please fall in love with the process and just enjoy creating your videos. If you have a passion for it, that's going to come off in your YouTube videos and really that's going to create a bigger success for you. Like, you know, your audience is actually going to see that. There are two ways that you can read your analytics. The first one is probably the most common and you actually have an analytic tab within the creator studio and that just shows you your analytics for your channel as a whole. Now that is pretty broad and you can get as specific as you want, but that really just shows your whole entire channel compared to if you go within each individual video, you can see just the analytics for that one video. So I'm going to walk you through both ways, but we're going to start with your YouTube channel as a whole, how you can read your analytics. When you log into your creator studio, this is the dashboard right here, which is actually a great place to get started with your analytics. If you just want the bare basics, you don't want to dive deep into it. This is a good place to look, especially because they just changed this. So you can see your summary over the last 28 days, what your views look like, what your watch time looks like, as well as what your revenue looks like. And it also shares what videos have been the most successful within the last 48 hours. So if you just want like bare bones, you don't really want to dive deep into your analytics. This is not a bad spot to look. Also, it shares obviously your subscriber count, right? Right there. Over here on the left hand side, this is another box that I've shared before and something that I really, really enjoy using. And it just compares your most recent 10 videos to each other and it kind of ranks them. So what ones performed the best in terms of views? What does the view duration look like as well as watch time? It just really gives you a good idea of what topics are performing well for you as well as if you're trying out different uploading days or different times for uploading. This can also give you a good idea of what videos are actually performing compared to others. So this is again a great spot if you just want basics, like you do not want to dive into the nitty gritty, this is where you want to go. Now, really what I want to share with you guys is over here on the left hand side, if we click on the analytics option, this is going to bring you to the new, just lovely, I honestly, I'm not too happy with this change that they've done. I thought it was so much easier to read beforehand and I was just really content with the way that it was before, but they changed it. They added this wordage here and I just think it takes up too much room and I sent them feedback with my thoughts on it because I'm hoping that they can kind of change it and just make it a bit more informative. So what I really recommend that you guys do is right up top here where you can change the time frame. I like to look at the last 28 days because that gives me a pretty good representation of what's just been going on over the past month and what my views really look like. So again, if you don't want to dive into the nitty gritty of this, this is an easy way to see, okay, on this day, I had 32,000 views compared to this day, I had 25,000 views. So it's just really easy to see kind of what's going on day by day, as well as if you notice that there's a big spike in your views. So like, like there's a spike here, there's a spike here. This actually shows that those are uploading days and it will show you what video was actually uploaded that day. So if you just wanna see what your uploading days are doing for you, like how many views you're getting, they easily make that available for you, which I do think is pretty neat. Now you can also go over and click on your watch time, which this is by hours before it was by minutes. And honestly, if you were trying to reach your 4,000 watch hours, it is so much easier to look at the actual hours instead of converting the minutes into hours. So this is a really, really nice and one question 
question that I actually get a lot is when does it roll over? Because they say that you have to have 4,000 watch hours within a year. Now, does that mean your first year on YouTube? Like, what does that actually mean? So if you go up here to this time frame, if you just click on the last 365 days, that is what it means. So it actually keeps recalculating it every single day, 365 days from this day. So it's not like just the start of 2019, the start of 2020. It is from today, the past 365 days. So if you ever just wanna see how close you are, that's a good way to do it, is just click on the last 365 days. Now I'm gonna go back to 28 days. You can also see your number of subscribers, and again, it will share day by day how many subscribers you gained that day, and if you are monetized, you can click on your revenue, and you can see how much money you made from your revenue on specific days. Now I do want to note that your analytics are delayed by a day. So in terms of my views, if I go back here, the views that are appearing are from yesterday that's what I see compared to the revenue that's actually delayed two days. So I will only see the 19th here compared to the 20th on all of my other analytics. So that's just kind of the way it works. It takes a little bit of time to process, but if you are curious about your real-time analytics, what's going on in this exact moment, as well as within the last 48 hours, something I like to pay attention to is this little square up here. So this will give you your subscriber count, how many views you've had within the last 48 hours. And one thing that I recommend, especially if you're trying to figure out what time to upload your YouTube videos is actually hover over the and see what hour you're getting the most views. This shows you real time how many views you're getting in one hour. So if it is not an upload day for you, what times of the day are you getting the most views? And that will give you a good idea of when your audience is actually active on the platform and when you should upload your YouTube videos. And then down here, you can just see your top three videos within the last 48 hours. If you wanna click on see more, you can. I don't do this that often, but it is interesting to see that, okay, this video actually within the last 60 minutes, it's generated 235 views. So right now that topic is doing pretty well for me. And that also kind of says that maybe I'm getting a lot of comments on that video and that should be something that I should pay attention to if I want to increase my engagement. But within just this overview section, I mean, I haven't even clicked on different tabs up here. I would really pay attention to this box and not just in this view, I would click on the see more option because this is going to give you a lot more detail. And really there's a lot that you can do within this, but I just want to give you kind of the basics so you can understand how to read it. So this is sharing the last 28 days. Actually, let's back this out the last 90 days just so we've got a little bit more data and it will show you with these colored lines your top five videos in terms of views currently that's what I have selected is views it will show you the top five videos how they are performing what is going on in terms of like the trend within these videos and if you actually stop your mouse and hover over it it will break it down with how many views these videos received in that one day now if you want to take a look at your YouTube channel as a whole you can click on this total option right here and that's just going to give you a black line that shares how your channel is doing now I do think it's a little bit difficult to look at your channel as a whole when it's on the daily setting so right now this is showing me daily views so obviously December 31st, not that great of views compared to up here, January 4th, got a lot better views. But what I like to click on is right here, this daily that appears, you can actually change how it's broken out. So if I click on weekly, I can get a better understanding of kind of the flow of my YouTube channel, where things are spiking, where are things plateauing. So this was over the holidays. Obviously it was in a little bit of a lull because people were busy. And then up here, another spike. And then down here, guys, it's the very start of the week. So obviously that's way down, but that's a good way to look at it as well as if you want to click on monthly, I'm going to break this out a little bit further. So let's do 360. 65 days, you can see monthly how many views you received just as a whole. Now, everything that I've shared with you so far within this see more, a bit more advanced look at your analytics is actually only within this video tab right here. And I don't go any further than this traffic source. So I will show you traffic source next, but all of these other tabs, guys, I don't even pay attention to because that's getting a little bit too nitty gritty for me. And I don't think that really diving into those is going to make that big of a difference for my YouTube channel. I will show you a little bit more about your audience here in a second, but I do want to share this traffic source. If you click on that, that's going to let you understand where your views are actually coming from. So is it coming from browse features, the suggested section, it's coming from your subscriptions, like what is actually going on here? So right down here, this is where you can actually see. So this blue line, most of my views are coming from the browse features. Now that's pretty broad and you guys may not know what browse features are, or if you guys want to see like suggested videos or something, what you can actually do is click on this down here. And I get this question so many times, browse features are driving me a lot of traffic. What the heck does that mean? If you click on 
it, you can actually see. So this blue line is because I'm appearing on people's home pages. It says home right down here. Compared to this green line, I can see when the spikes are. This is when I'm uploading my YouTube videos. So my subscriptions or the subscriptions page within YouTube, that's driving me a lot of views whenever I upload a YouTube video and I expect that. But if we go back to just the traffic source in general, again, down here, you can see YouTube search. So let's say you're really focusing on your SEO and you want to know what keywords are actually driving traffic to your videos. If you click on YouTube search, you can figure out what keywords are actually driving you views. So you can see the content bug, content bug, not surprised at all that I am ranking for those, but how to monetize YouTube videos. I've received a thousand views from just that one specific keyword search in the last 28 days. And you can just scroll through and see what keywords are actually driving you views or watch time here. So I do think that traffic source is a good tab to pay attention to as well as really just your video tab that's going to break it down for you and just show you more analytics on your videos. So now if we go back, this is just the overview. I clicked on analytics. We're on the overview tab right up top here. You can take a look at each individual tab to learn a little bit more information. So let's say you're curious where your audience is located or if people are actually subscribed to your YouTube channel. What you can see right down here is based off of the watch time. So the people that are watching your videos, 63% of the people that are watching my videos are not subscribed. 33% are, and then there's just an unknown 3%. But this is pretty interesting to look at to see if your videos are actually converting people into subscribers subscribers, as well as if you're curious about the gender, the age group, the country that they live in, this is a good section to just understand your audience. And then the other section you may want to pay attention to is actually your revenue tab right up here. If you're curious what your CPM is, how much money you've made, if you want to take a look at the breakdown month by month, how much money you've made every single month, this is the place that you want to do it. Now, all we've really taken a look at is just the analytics tab on YouTube. That is it. And yes, there is so much more that I can go into and that I could teach you guys when it comes to getting like really nitty gritty within your analytics. But I think especially if you are a beginner, you don't need to do that. You don't need to worry about that. I would definitely pay attention to how many views you are getting a day, what videos are bringing you the most views, because that's going to help you to understand what videos to create, like what topics to create videos on that are really just going to grow your YouTube channel. Because I've shared this actually in several videos in the past, but riding the wave is so, so important. So if you notice that one video is starting to get suggested by YouTube, create other similar videos, because there's a better chance that those videos are also going to get picked up by YouTube and you're just really going to skyrocket your YouTube channel. But there is one other section that I want to share with you guys within the analytic platform. And that would be to take a look at your videos individually and see how the analytics are performing that way. Now I'm going to click on this videos tab over here and you guys are probably used to this whenever you're uploading a YouTube video, editing a YouTube video. This is where you get access to like your description and the cards and your end screen and all of that stuff. But actually, if you hover over them, you can see that there are different icons here. So if you just want to get to the comments of one video, you can do that right here. Or of course, we're going to take a look at the analytics. So I'm going to click on this little analytics icon that appears right here. And it's going to look a little wonky. This is YouTube's way of showing you that I am above the typical for this period. Like in terms of views, that's what's showing right now. I am above the typical range for this period, but I hate looking at my analytics this way. So what I'll do, I will actually go right here. I'll click on custom. Now you don't have to do this, but the end date, I'm just going to re-click on the 20th, click apply, and it's actually going to resort this data into something that I want to see. Now I feel like this is a terrible video to take a look at. Let me go to one of my ones that's not as recent and is still performing really well. So we'll go to my first YouTube paycheck video. I'll show you another way that you can get access to these analytics. If you just click on it in general, you can click on the analytics tab over here on the left hand side. Again, this weird graph is happening. I hate looking at it that way. So I'm going to click on custom, go to the end date, click on January 20th again, and then it's going to resort it. And this will give me a better understanding of how this video has performed over time. So this is set up the exact same way as just your analytic overview that I was showing you before. And you can hover over this and see that the day that this video launched, it actually generated me 282 views. And then it went down, you know, I wasn't seeing good views, but it wasn't until like right around this part that I started to see more and more views on this video. And even just this high peak on January 7th, I received 9,600 views on this one video. So this is a good area to look at if you just want to see one specific video, how it's performing, as well as how much money this one specific video has made you. And then we get into audience retention, which is actually going to be my next YouTube video for you guys. So if you want to learn more about audience retention, my audience retention rate, what is a good rate audience retention I had on videos that really took off on my YouTube channel. I am going to share that in my very next 
next video. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss that. But otherwise, again, the same tabs appear up top here. So if you're curious about the reach within this YouTube video, you can take a look at this nice funnel, which I have shared in another video before. So I will include that in the description bar down below so you can understand how to read this. Revenue, again, if you wanna see the CPM for this one specific video, you can do that. But this section, really, it just shows you more detail on one specific video, how it's performing. And I do not pay attention to this all that often, but it is important to know how to actually read this information. And that is it within this YouTube video. So I'm really hoping you guys liked it. It was definitely a lot of just talking and screen recording, but if you did, make sure you hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below because it really does help to support me. And like I said, the next video, we're going to be diving deep into audience retention rate. So if that's something you are interested in, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it, but I'll see you guys back here in three days. Bye guys. Thank you.